Imagine being told that the world of mathematics, that vast and complex universe filled with numbers, shapes, and formulas, doesn't actually exist at all in any real sense. All those numbers, those proofs, those equations, what if they were just stories we tell ourselves? Useful fictions to help us understand reality, but don't correspond to any real objects in the universe. That's the world of mathematical fictionalism, a philosophy that questions whether mathematics describes anything real, or if it's simply a useful language for describing the physical world. Basically, fictionalism says that we should think of mathematics not as a description of a mathematical universe, but rather as a helpful story or fiction that aids in the formulation of our scientific theories. Fictionalism is a type of mathematical nominalism, which is a philosophical position that denies the existence of abstract mathematical objects. Nominalists argue that things like numbers, sets, and functions don't exist independently of the human mind, like at all. They're not part of reality in the way trees, oceans, or stars are. Fictionalism takes this a step further, however. Rather than simply deny the existence of mathematical entities, fictionalists argue that statements in mathematics like there are infinitely many prime numbers are false, and therefore not literally true but are useful within the fiction of mathematics, a fiction we tell ourselves. And in this way, mathematics becomes a bit like a novel, actually. Just as we can say Frodo Baggins lives in the Shire without believing Frodo Baggins actually exists, we can say there are infinitely many prime numbers without assuming that primes are real objects. So while statements like 5 times 7 equals 35 within the fictionalist framework are false if taken literally, the true, however, within the story of mathematics, just as Hogwarts is a school for wizards, is true within the Harry Potter universe. Fictionalists borrow this idea from literary fiction where certain statements are true within the world of the story, even though they're not true in our actual world. So when we use math, we're acting within a kind of shared fiction that's useful but doesn't have a literal basis in real entities. Take a simple equation like 6 plus 3 equals 9. If we're fictionalists, we'd say that although we treat this statement as true, it doesn't mean that 6, 3, and 9 exist as entities on their own. For fictionalists, these numbers are more like symbols in a made-up language that happens to be very effective at describing patterns and relationships. It's like saying Superman can fly. Within the comic book universe, that's a true statement, but it doesn't imply that Superman is real. One of the central figures in developing this philosophy, fictionalism, is Hartree Field, whose 1980 book Science Without Numbers set out to challenge the idea that mathematics is essential for understanding physical theories. Field wanted to show that mathematics could be entirely stripped away from scientific theories without there being any significant loss in the explanatory power of the theories. His primary goal was to nominalize scientific theories, to recast them in a form that doesn't rely on mathematical objects. As part of his work, Field focused on nominalizing Newton's theory of gravitation. This means he attempted to reframe Newton's laws in a way that didn't involve numbers, sets, or other mathematical constructs. Field argued that the real strength of mathematics, its actual strength, lies in its conservativeness, not its truth. And to say that a mathematical system is conservative means that it can be added to a scientific theory without generating any new empirical predictions that couldn't be reached by the scientific theory alone. That is, it is a tool that helps shorten our derivations and organize our knowledge, but it doesn't, or at least it shouldn't, add any new content to our understanding of the physical world. In other words, the results we obtain using mathematics and science could, in principle, be reached without mathematics, but at a much greater cost in terms of time and complexity. That is, using mathematics in our physical theories is a huge convenience and provides for a more elegant explanation of the theory, but in actuality, it is unnecessary according to field and proponents of fictionalism. To illustrate this so-called conservativeness, Field proposed a pretty slick strategy, actually. First, he showed that scientific theories could potentially operate without any reference at all to mathematical objects, as we just discussed with Newton's theory of gravitation. Second, he introduced what's known as a fictional operator. This operator allows us to say, for example, according to arithmetic, there are infinitely many prime numbers. By framing statements this way, by adding the phrase according to arithmetic, 
field maintains that we're not making claims about a separate mathematical reality, but are instead stating what's true within the fictional system of mathematics. One of the motivations behind fictionalism then is to reject what's called the Quine Putnam indispensability argument, which is a cornerstone of mathematical Platonism, also known as mathematical realism, and which was proposed by philosophers W.B.O. Quine and Hilary Putnam. The indispensability argument suggests, in a nutshell, that because mathematics is indispensable to our best scientific theories, we ought to believe in the existence of mathematical objects. That is, we ought to have ontological commitment to mathematical entities. Platonists argue that mathematical entities like numbers or geometric forms exist in an abstract realm somewhere, and that this abstract realm is somehow part of the structure of the physical universe. Fictionalism pushes back by asserting that mathematics is indispensable only as a convenient shorthand or language perhaps, but not as a descriptor of a separate mathematical reality. Nevertheless though, fictionalism has its challenges. One major issue it has is the reliability problem. If mathematics doesn't describe anything real, then why does it work so well in describing the natural world? For example, why do abstract mathematical models of gravity accurately predict how planets move? If mathematics is just a convenient fiction, then why does it map so perfectly onto physical phenomena? Fictionalists typically might respond by saying that mathematics is conservative. It's built in such a way that it fits with our observations, not because it describes something real, but because we've tailored it to help describe the real physical world. Yet this answer doesn't always satisfy critics of fictionalism or nominalism in general, who argue that there seems to be something deeper in the relationship between math and reality that fictionalism fails to address. Another criticism is that fictionalism seems counterintuitive, especially for those who work in mathematics or the sciences. Statements like there are infinitely many prime numbers are widely understood to be true within the field of mathematics. But if fictionalism is correct, then any statement that implies the existence of mathematical objects like prime numbers or whatever would technically be false because those objects don't exist, right? However, fictionalism, I suppose, does offer a unique lens on mathematics, one that highlights the instrumental role of mathematics in scientific pursuit. According to fictionalism, the success of mathematics in science is due to its function as a tool or shorthand rather than its status as a true description of reality. And fictionalists like Field argue that the utility of mathematics comes from its structural simplicity and ability to shorten derivations thereby making scientific theories easier to manipulate and apply without requiring any commitment to the existence of numbers or other mathematical entities. In the end, mathematical fictionalism is still an intriguing response to mathematical Platonism and the indispensability argument which I discussed in a previous video, as it offers an alternative viewpoint, one that treats mathematics as a fictional but useful language. And by reframing mathematical statements as part of a fictional story rather than, say, a literal truth, fictionalism allows us to appreciate the power of mathematics without assuming that it refers to real entities, despite it facing significant challenges such as the reliability problem and its counterintuitive implications. And of course, there are additional objections to fictionalism and all of nominalism, in fact. One objection is the Quine Putnam indispensability argument itself, actually. So basically, it's fictionalists and realists arguing back and forth. And then there are other mathematical philosophies out there, such as structuralism, intuitionism, and formalism. The famous mathematician David Hilbert being the most prominent advocate of the latter. Anyway, that's it for this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below, and let me know if you'd like to see other videos pertaining to the philosophy of mathematics. Thanks for watching. Take care.